We are back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be naming one player from every NBA team that could have a chance to have a breakout season or one player who is most likely from their respective teams to have a breakout season. Um, I'm not going to lie. This was very tough for me. There were some teams that like just didn't really have anyone that I thought could have a breakout season. I just had to put names down there just to fill the purpose of this video. There's only a couple, like two, three teams here. Um, so we'll get to that, but uh, make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe and comment down below. Also go check out the previous video that I just made where I made a mock draft um, following the draft lottery. And it was a full first round mock draft. You guys will love that video. So go watch it. I'll put the link in the description. But yeah, leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. Um, and let me know, you know, uh, who you think could have a uh, breakout season from either of your you know any of your teams and um yeah let's get right into it man we're gonna start off in alphabetical order with the atlanta hawks by city um atlanta hawks man this was there there were a couple of candidates here with the atlanta hawks um but i'm actually gonna go with anyeka kongu you know i could have gone with jalen uh, johnson i could have gone with sharif cooper there were some other candidates there anyeka kongu i think has the biggest chance to have a breakout season on the hawks i think that um his potential is through the roof i'm a huge fan of his he was just the sixth overall pick a couple years ago i do think that with clint capella kind of getting up there um in age and you know he he's had a couple of injuries i think anyeka kongu is prime and i do think he should be the starting center of the team next year um as clint capella ages because he, he clint capella was not really good this past season i think anyeka kongu should be the future starting center of that team and i think you know we'll see what nate mcmillan does but i think he has a bright future ahead of him and um that's why he's my breakout player uh for the atlanta hawks coming to the boston celtics um again this was a this was pretty tough for me but I'm going to go with Aaron Neesmith. Um, and the reason I went with him is because he doesn't really he didn't really get much playing time under coach Udoka uh, this season. You know, they've, they've had a backup uh, point guard and shooting guard already set in Peyton Pritchard and now Derek White after the trade deadline. So Neesmith did not really get much minutes, but Neesmith was a lottery pick. Um, who was picked 14th overall by the Celtics. This is a guy that shot 52% from three in college at Vanderbilt. Um, he is a, you know, three and D specialist. And I do think that if he can, you know, get his feet wet and play some NBA games and get some minutes underneath his belt, um, he could be a very good, you know, player for the Celtics in the future. He's already shown some, some of those defensive tendencies in the Heat series where he had like a couple of crazy blocks in game one. But um, I do think that with playing time, Neesmith's game is going to get better and better. Um, coming to the Brooklyn Nets, we do have Nicholas Claxton. I could have gone with Cam Thomas or Kessler Edwards or whatever, um, but I'm going to go with Nicholas Claxton here. Um, the reason I'm going to go with Nick Claxton is because I think that he, sh he is their best center. I think he should be their starting center. I think he will be their starting center as LA and, um, and Drummond, you know, they get up there in age. Drummond, I think can be a backup. LaMarcus Aldridge, I think might as well just retire, man. I, I you know, he's had a great career, but I think it's time for the young fella, Nick Claxton to show out. Uh, Nick Claxton is like a lot of, you know, resembles a lot of the modern centers, um, you know, the athletic centers like the Robert Williams is of this world. He's a guy who can rim run, play defense, block shots, um, as well as just, you know, uh, be an athletic, energizing big in transition. I do think that if he, you know, comes back next season after working on his free throw shooting, I think he could have a chance to have a really big season, especially with the additions of Ben Simmons with his playmaking ability. He, ben Simmons could, you know, set up Nick Claxton with some easy buckets. Same with Kyrie and KD. So um, he's going to get easy looks playing with those three. So Nick Claxton will be my guy for the Nets. Coming to the Charlotte Hornets, after firing James Borrego, I'm going to go with James Booknight. Um, and James Booknight did not play at all, basically, his rookie season. He was playing in the G League mostly. Um, which I thought was a mistake, but James Borrego got fired. Um, I think their new coach will play James Booknight, whoever that is. Um, it looks like, you know, they're interviewing Terry Stotts. We'll see what happens with that. But James Booknight, I think, is a um, is a stud. You know, he was just a lottery pick last year. Like I said, did not play any minutes, basically, in the NBA. Um, and I do think that, you know, he, he's going to get some minutes next year, and he's going to show people why he was drafted and touted so high out of college at UConn. Um, so James Booknight is my guy for the Charlotte Hornets. Coming to the Chicago Bulls, we are going to have Patrick Williams. And the reason I have Patrick Williams is because he missed a lot of last season with his injury. Um, but I do think that Patrick Williams, he's one of my favorite players um, in the league period, but one of my favorite players from that from that draft in 2020 um, from FSU. He has, you know, um, 
unlimited potential, man. This guy's potential is through the roof. He reminds me, I'm not going to say he's going to be like this player. And don't come at my head for saying that he reminds me of this player, but I just see some Kawhi-like mannerisms and tendencies in Patrick Williams. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but he was the youngest player in the draft a couple years ago, and he's going to have probably be the starting power forward um, with the Chicago Bulls this season. And he's going to have you know all the time in the world to showcase his skills and talents, and the Bulls will benefit from that. Now, coming to the Cleveland Cavaliers, we're going to have Isaac Okoro here. Um, Isaac Okoro is the, like, I, 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 like, I could have gone with someone else, but I went with Isaac Okoro because although he's been in the league for a couple years now, we haven't really seen him, you know, be, live up to that potential of a fifth overall pick yet. He's had flashes here and there for sure. I'm not saying he's a bust, but I'm saying that, you know, for a guy who was picked so high, you know, we haven't really seen the consistent production from Isaac Okoro. Now, granted, a lot of that is because they have a jam-packed guard rotation um but i think that isaac okoro defensively we already know he's a specialist defensively but offensively we just have to see if he can bring it and um all he has to do is just knock down open shots whenever he has the ball just be a three and d player for them um and yeah isaac okoro is the guy uh for the cleveland cavaliers um now moving on to the next team we have the dallas mavericks here we're gonna have josh green um now josh green was like the only player i could select here because he was like the only guy who could have a potential to have a breakout season, maybe Frank Nilakina, but um, I went with Josh Green. He he hasn't really played much um, in 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 his years with the Mavericks, and a lot of that is because you know, offensively he's not really knocking down open shots whenever he has them. That's why he's kind of falling out of the rotation. But I do think that defensively he already has it. I think he's an underrated playmaker. But if he just works on his shooting mechanics and makes sure that he's knocking down open shots, I think he'll be golden. The Denver Nuggets are up next. Here we're gonna have Bones Highland. I think Bones Highland could have a similar arc or tra trajectory to a Ty Tyrese Maxey from this season. Um, I think he is that good and talented. He just made All Rookie Second Team. I think Bones Highland is the real deal, and I do think that you know we'll see what happens with Jamal Murray's injury. But even if he's you know if Jamal Jamal Murray's healthy, I expect Bones Highland to be a backup guard. Um, and I do think he's gonna get minutes. I think I do think he's gonna be productive. He's just a spark plug off the bench um, for them. So. Bones Highland is the guy for the Denver Nuggets. Moving on to the Detroit Pistons, we're going to have Killian Hayes here. Um, now, I could have gone a couple of directions here. They have a lot of young talent on that team. Sadiq Bey kind of had his breakout this season. Uh, I didn't want to go Cade because this guy was literally like top three for rookie of the year. Like, it's very easy to say, oh, Cade's going to be an all-star. Like, I don't want to go with that route. You know, that's why I didn't go like Cade or Evan Mobley or Scotty Barnes because we already know these guys are going to be special. Um, it's just, you know, the guys who you know haven't really found their footing in the NBA yet, who, you know, will have breakout seasons potentially. And Killian Hayes is one of those guys. He was a seventh overall pick a couple of years ago. Hasn't really shown or lived up to that expectation yet. Um, we'll see what they do with the fifth overall pick this year, the Pistons. But if they, you know, if they go with the guard, then I guess Killian Hayes will be that six man type of guy for them. If they don't, then he'll be in the starting lineup, maybe. So uh, I'm going to go with Killian Hayes. I'm, I'm going to go with Killian Hayes for the Pistons. Um, Golden State Warriors, another another guy. Who did not really play much in his rookie season i'm gonna go with james wiseman now, i could have gone kuminga i could have gone moses moody i could have gone a couple of other players i went with james wiseman because he literally has not really played that much in his nba career at all you know he was he's his nba career is mostly injuries and um i do think that a lot of people think he's a bust i think you can't really classify someone like that as a bust especially two years in bro it's been like or three years in it it's, it's, it hasn't been that long at all so this let this guy develop I think he's going to be a solid player, um, and I do think with with the Warriors, his, his role can be a lot simplified than what it is on like a, a tanking team who needs him to do too much. So um, I think if he gets healthy, um, then he could be a very solid player and could have a breakout season with the Warriors. Houston Rockets are up next. I'm going with another big here. Alperin Shangun um, is going to be the pick for the Houston Rockets. I, I do expect the Houston Rockets and the Christian Wood to part ways sometime or the other because Christian Wood is getting up there in age um well he's not old but he's not young if you know what i mean he's like 27 somewhere in that age range it doesn't really fit their timeline right so um you know alper and shangun i do think that you can you can play him alongside a paolo bancaro or jabari smith or whoever you draft with your number three pick um chet holmgren but i do think that uh, alper and shangun's playmaking is one of his best traits um his finishing at the rim if he can start knocking down open shots you know you know he'll be in great shape especially with guys like you know Jalen Green and Josh Christopher already there at that guard position you got to go with Alper and Shangun um as the breakout player for the Rockets 
Indiana Pacers, another team that didn't really have too much for me to, you know, decide from. I went with Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith, another guy who's, you know, a 10th pick who did not really find his uh, footing in Phoenix. He came to the Pacers, showed some flashes towards the end of the season. I do like Jalen Smith a lot. I'm a big fan of his. He reminds me a lot of his current teammate, Miles Turner. That was his comparison coming out of Maryland. Um, and, you know, he is a he's a guy who can stretch the floor and defend at the rim as a center. And um, I do think he can play with Miles Turner a little bit as well. So if you need to play with him with Turner, you know, you could. So I, I'm going to go with Jalen Smith here. Um, and then moving on to the L.A. Clippers. Like I said, some, some teams just don't have many players for me to decide from. There were a couple of guys for the Clippers, though. Um, but I'm going to go with Terrence Mann. Um, I'm a huge fan of Terrence Mann's. I actually thought he was going to have a breakout season last season. Unfortunately, it did not really happen. He showed some flashes here and there, but um, I think Terrence Mann is due. I think Terrence Mann is due for a breakout season. I don't know when it's going to be, um, but, you know, we'll see what happens with Terrence Mann. But I think he's going to have a breakout season sometime, sometime or the other. And, you know, why not it be next season? So uh, Terrence Mann for the Clippers. Moving on to the, the other team in L.A., the Lakers. Um I mean, we, I guess we gotta we gotta go THT, man. We gotta go THT. THT is like the only guy. Um, well, him and Austin Reeves are the only guy who could have breakout seasons. I think Malik Monk maybe as well. Um, but Malik Monk kind of broke out last season. He had a couple of big moments with the Lakers. But I'm gonna go with Taylor Horn Tucker. You know, I want to see what this hype is about. I think he's a solid player, but I think Lakers fans overhype him. Um, so prove me wrong, THT. Like 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 go out there and show me why you were as valuable as the Lakers front office thinks you are, because this is a guy that the Lakers would not give up in so many different trades. And, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens with Taylor Horn Tucker, whether he stays on the team or whether he's gone. But I think out of everyone on that team, he is due for a breakout season the most. Now, moving on to the Memphis Grizzlies, we're going to go with Zaire Williams here. Uh, Zaire Williams is a guy that, you know, uh, started playing a little bit more towards the back end of the season with some injuries and stuff to Ja and Dylan Brooks and suspensions to Dylan Brooks and stuff like that. But um, I do think that Zaire Williams, you know, he was a 10th overall pick, uh, did not really play a whole lot in his rookie season. But next season, I do think he could have more opportunity, um, especially probably with the departure of Kyle Anderson because he's a free agent. So I, th I think that Zaire Williams could show why he's a 10th overall pick next season. Um, Miami Heat, this was so tough for me because the Heat, I couldn't go with Gabe Vincent. I couldn't go with Max Struess because these guys really broke out this season. Um, and, you know, a lot of the guys that, you know, I wanted to go with played a great deal this season because of injuries to their st their, their stars and their top guys. I'm just going to go with Omer Yurt 7. I'm going to go with Omer Yurt 7. I think Dwayne Dedman is going get, to get up there in age. I don't know if he's going to be back next season with the Heat. We'll see what they do with him. But Omer Yurt 7, if he, can, if he can slide into that backup center role, um, he already has great touch for a big man. He can, you know, um, his only problem is defensively. He's just, he's just slow footed, but offensively you can see the skill with this guy in summer league. He dominated. I know it's summer league, but still, um, he showed his talent there. So we'll see what happens. But I think Omar Yard seven is the guy for the heat Milwaukee bucks, another very tough, uh, team to, you know, pick a breakout player from. They have a lot of guys who are already set in their careers. I went with Jordan Wara. I went with Jordan Wara. Um, it was between him and Javon Carter, but Jordan Wara, I just remember from the Olympics, this guy was going crazy for Nigeria. And, you know, he's a guy who can knock down open threes. He's a very skilled player, man. Like, they're, they're guys who are, like, towards the back end of benches sometimes that are just buckets. And Jordan Wara is that guy. Um, and if he gets minutes, we'll see what happens. But I, I do think that Jordan Wara is due for a breakout season, whether it's with the Bucks or with a different team. But I'm just going to put him for the Bucks right now because he's on there. So Jordan Wara will be the guy for the Bucks. Minnesota Timberwolves. This guy is one of my most improved player picks next season. Jaden McDaniels. I'm a huge fan of his. He showed his, you know, potential in that game seven or game some some one of the games against the um the the Grizzlies. He showed his uh true potential. And I do think that Jaden McDaniels is a stud. I think he's the real deal. I do think that, you know, um, with more opportunity there, we'll see, you know, with, with Torian Prince leaving and stuff like that, we'll see, you know, what happens with him. But Jaden McDaniels is, is, is a is a perfect candidate for this um, this category for the Minnesota Timberwolves. New Orleans Pelicans, it was between two players for me, Kyra Lewis and this other guy that I'm about to name. I didn't go Kyra Lewis because I don't know how he's going to come back from his injury. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the ACL. So I'm going to go with Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy, all he has to do is just knock down open shots and play defense, be the perfect 3 and D player. Did not get much minutes in his rookie season, but I, I do think he's going to get more minutes next season with the Pelicans. Um, 
So Trey Murphy will be the guy for the New Orleans Pelicans. New York Knicks are up next. Again, a lot of different candidates to choose from. I went with Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin is the guy I went with. He ended off the season strongly, man. He finished off with some crazy games. He had 42 points in his last game against the Raptors. Um, yeah, he went crazy. I do think he he is another guy who could be a most improved player. Um, he's a guy, you know, uh, who's going to get minutes. You know, we'll see what happens with Julius Randle. But Obi Toppin, if he slides into that power forward position, the sky's the limit for this guy. You know, he's a guy who's supposed to be a top five pick. He fell down to eight and he... You know, he's a stud. Obi Toppin is a stud. Uh, moving on to the OKC Thunder, a lot of candidates to choose from, but I'm going to be a little bit biased here and pick my boy Trey Mann. I'm a huge fan of Trey Mann. Anyone who knows me knows that I love Trey Mann. Um, and Trey Mann, I do think that, you know, they have Giddy and Shea. So, you know, uh, I don't know the opportunity for him, but I think even off the bench as a sixth man, you know, he could be a guy who can just light it up off the bench or be, you know, uh, uh, playing that three guard lineup with them at times. So Trey Mann is the pick here for OKC. I'm a huge fan of his. Orlando Magic, I'm going with the guard as well. I got to go with Jalen Suggs. Kind of had an underwhelming rookie season. Uh, a lot of people wrote him off. I'm not ready to ride Jalen Suggs off. I think he's very skilled and talented. I do think that, you know, with time, he's going to show why he was the fifth overall pick. And Jalen Suggs, I do think we'll have a breakout season this year. So um, we'll see what happens, you know, with, with his uh, playing time and his you know what what the magic do with the first pick they're obviously going to go with one of the bigs but jalen Suggs, i do think will have a breakout year um philadelphia 76ers i really did not you know have much to choose from here um i went with paul reed now you might just be looking at me like yo like why why paul reed i actually think that paul reed is like solid bro i think paul reed you know showed me something in that heat series um, that, you know, I didn't really see before he was a G League MVP, but he didn't really play much for the Sixers. But um, this guy is an energy player. He's a hustle player. He is undersized at that, you know, center position. But I do think that he's not a true center. He can play four. He can play a little bit of three here and there. But Paul Reed is the guy here, especially because the Sixers don't really have another guy that I think might break out. So Paul Reed for the Sixers is the guy. Phoenix Suns. This was a team that literally had no one. Like, I did not know who to pick for the phoenix suns if you're a suns fan bro i'm lost like please tell me who you think is gonna have a breakout season i literally went with aaron holiday because he's the only guy that made like a little bit of sense to me um i don't want to you know lie to you and go with a guy like ish wainwright or someone that i'd had no clue about or like haven't really seen play much games um especially like one of these two-way players so i just went with um uh what's it called uh Aaron Holiday. I just went with Aaron Holiday just because there was literally no one else for the Suns from for to, to go with. Uh Portland Trailblazers. I wanted to go with Anthony Simons, but Anthony Simons basically averaged like 18 points or 17 points or some, something like that last season. So it's kind of like a cop-out answer to pick him, especially because he might have broken out last season already. So I'm gonna go with Nasir Little. I'm a huge fan of Nasir Little's. Um I think I, I love Nasir Little. I I I think that Nasir Little is a perfect 3 and D player. Um you can see a theme. A lot of my players are guys that know their roles and are going to be you know uh perfect in their situations guys who can be three and d players who don't have to do too much can just you know play their games and break out and i think this year little will do that um and and speaking of three and d players my next guy for the san antonio spurs is another three and d player and probably my most improved player pick my favorite to win it um early favorite to win it devin vassell yeah devin vassell man i'm a huge fan of devin vassell's um i do think that you know he's going to show why he was selected with uh what was it the 11th pick um i think devin vassell could have a mikhail bridges type uh type arc um and i'm a huge fan of devin vassell's like i said i think he knows his role i think he you know he's a he's a smart high iq player um and he plays his role to the highest you know uh, level that he can so devin vassell is the guy here moving on to the toronto raptors we're gonna go with precious achua um Precious Achua showed some flashes here and there. He is a guy that still needs to work on his free throw shooting and stuff like that, but he has all the athletic tools in the world to break out if he needs to, um, especially playing in that, in that Toronto Raptors development system and program. Moving on to the Utah Jazz, we're going to go with Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Um, not many options to choose from again here, but Nikhil Alexander-Walker was a guy that I thought was going to break out last season. 
didn't really end up happening so i'm gonna go with this season again please don't disappoint me in the queue i really need you to so show me something bro because i was so high on you coming out of virginia tech um then lastly we have the washington wizards and here we're gonna go with rui hachimura um i could have gone with abdia and someone someone else like that but i'm gonna go with rui hachimura uh, missed a chunk of last season due to personal issues well, hopefully he's fine and hopefully you know he's his his mental state is good enough um, and, it, and it's clear for him to show out on the court because I think he has a ton of potential. And I do think that, you know, he's going to get opportunity with that Washington Wizards system and that program over there um, and, and, and that team. So that's those are my players, man. If you guys disagree or agree, let me know down in the comment section below. But be civil. I'll see you all later as always. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.